High at Sunday, July 7th, still tracking Tropical Storm Barrel on its final day approaching the central Texas coastline. Landfall is expected in roughly 15 to 18 hours from the time of this recording during the overnight hours on Sunday night or the early hours of Monday morning. We are seeing gradual organization and strengthening of the storm, but it remains a gradual, not a rapid process for now. It's good news the longer this lasts. The thing that is limiting barrels intensification rate is the dry air that has been continually wrapping around the southern, eastern, and now northern sides of the circulation. You can make out this tongue of relatively cloudless region or less cloudy than the storm core. This is dry air that's coming in and constantly mixing in towards the center of the circulation. So we are not yet seeing full deep thunderstorm coverage over the center of the storm. This will gradually change during the course of today. What's essentially happening now is that vertical shear has lessened and so the storm is becoming more symmetric and due to this rotation it is constantly stirring the dry air with new moisture that's being picked up off the ocean and that stirring process will eventually mix out the dry air as it gets spiraled in toward the center and eventually the entire storm circulation will moisten up to the point where deep convective coverage will increase in intensity and spatial coverage over the storm core and we will start to see potentially a new eye wall begin to build. Presently, if we look at the radar data out of Brownsville, what you'll really see here is the inner core banding is spiraling in in a hook shape toward the center, but we don't see a closed ring of thunderstorms at a tight, small radius around the center. So this is emblematic of a tropical storm, not a hurricane structure that is ready to rapidly intensify just yet. If we look at the Air Force reconnaissance data coming out of the plane that's flying in there right now, we also see that where the center of circulation is, if you measure out to where the maximum winds are in all quadrants, it is still a fairly broad radius of maximum wind, 40 to 60 miles, depending on what direction you go from the center. In order to see more rapid pace of strengthening, you would see this radius of maximum wind contract to a couple dozen miles or less, and you would also see these strong winds in red to the northeast of the center start to spread around the other quadrants of the circulation as well. For now, they are still limited to the northeast side. These are the two things I'm kind of looking for or changes to in order to say that barrel may begin to intensify more quickly. So far it's been pretty gradual and that's good news the longer this lasts, but it could be that the storm begins to pick up the pace of strengthening as it gradually moistens up this inner core and maybe if it starts to contract a bit and these strong winds rotate around a greater azimuthal breadth of the circulation, then we may see a quicker pace as the storm comes toward the coast. In terms of the track here, I made a quick plot just showing where the 1 a.m. set of computer models uh, expected the storm to be at the time of this recording, which would be around 10.30 a.m. Central Time. And you can see the yellow dots here, the labels kind of run over each other, but the storm is in fact roughly right about there. So they are pretty close, and the storm is essentially where it was expected to be by the overnight model guidance. And if you look at where the guidance ultimately takes the storm, you can see they initialized earlier in the night and they show the ultimate landfall point being near or east of Matagorda Bay. And that's kind of where all modeling is zeroing in on at the final hour here. And that is where the official National Hurricane Center forecast track takes the storm as well. Might be a little hard to see here, but this is Matagorda Bay right there. And the hurricane comes in just on the Eastern side of that and you can see the timing here 7 a.m. Monday it's already inland so NHC expecting this to come in during the overnight hours plus or minus a few hours that could always happen but in general the expectation is overnight and in the dark so be aware of that hurricane warning up for the central Texas coastline both to the left and to the right of the landfall point tropical storm warning to the Texas Louisiana border and a tropical storm warning to the Texas Mexico border so the entire Texas coastline could see potential wind hazards from barrel, although risks have been decreasing a little bit in southern Texas as the landfall location has continued to shift up the coastline, which is good news for folks farther south toward Mexico. And as far as the maximum winds near the landfall, NHC currently saying this will have max winds of around 85 miles per hour, making it a category one hurricane at the time of landfall. 
And that sounds about right here. Now there has been a continued risk for this to go a little further and have winds of at least 100 miles per hour, which would make it a category two. That's only going to happen if we get a closed eye wall with enough time over water to actually rapidly intensify for a few hours prior to moving into the coast. The odds of a category two decrease with every passing hour that that is not occurring. And so the odds might be starting to come down a little bit as we're seeing the trends this morning. But the expectation is that this will be a hurricane and a category one hurricane would bring winds of at least 75 miles per hour at a maximum near the storm core and especially in the northeastern eye wall as this is coming ashore or the northern eye wall. So we'll keep an eye out for this. Fortunately, the higher end outcomes decreasing in probability a little bit. But regardless, be prepared just in case for winds possibly up to 100 miles an hour as this comes ashore in case that happens. Uh, as this moves inland, of course, winds will decrease, but there still could be gusts capable of causing power outages and issues even as this starts to move inland. And there will also be storm surge risk, coastal flooding across most of Texas, maximized near into the east of the landfall point, four to six feet in Matagorda Bay, three to five in Galveston Bay, and then even some mild water level rises possible in southwestern Louisiana as well. And then flash flood risk due to inland rainfall. This will be a fairly slow moving storm, not super brisk. So this will be moving moving through eastern Texas and possibly several inches or up to 10 inches of rain in some localized spots, causing a moderate risk of flash flooding, including some portions of the Houston metro area. And as this generally moves east of Dallas and then up into portions of Arkansas, Missouri and Illinois, where we could see some flash flooding risk over the next few days as the storm moves into the central part of the country. That'll be about it for this video. Follow me on Twitter at Tropical Tidbits for more frequent updates during the day as we track Barrel and its organization. And if it's going to strengthen more than expected, I'll be telling you about it on my Twitter. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.